and gold. And we're back. We're back. Well, Ooh. live across the country. To the cam, just jitter, crisscrossing like a jitterbug. Yeah. Was any of that racist? West Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah, I was in uh, Ohio last night doing a show for the JB Smuckers. Oh, I saw your post with you. The Jelly People. Ever heard of them? (laughs) Yeah, pretty big. It was the most antiseptic corporate show I've done in a long time. So get this. What does uh, antiseptic mean? (laughs) Opposite of receptive? No, Bud Lights. No, it was like, uh, here's what it was. It was like a lunchtime show in a corporate conference environment where they've been literally just hearing about like best practices, sort of like, here's how you load the forklift and like shit like that. Then I go on. It was billed as lunch and entertainment. So literally they're like going to get lunch and there's entertainment on stage. Then uh, I get introduced by this very nice person, but not the most rousing introduction. And as they're eating their lunch, it was prepared by like, apparently this is a big Amish country. Like there's a lot of Amish people. And so there were Amish people catering. So the lunch was made by the Amish and served by the Amish. And so so not only is it like a very corporate sanitized, well-lit, bad sound environment lunchtime show as people are eating their Amish food there's also people walking around picking up plates in the little hats with the oh. strings on <laughs> and I was in the middle of one joke and I was like I gotta be honest guys this is as far away from a nightclub environment there's literally Amish people walking around picking up your empty plates of mashed potatoes like I can't imagine a worse setting for comedy but the best part of- to the person that booked me <laughs> yeah it was, it was good money and also only like 25 minutes there's nothing better yeah. than when they're like hey, we're gonna start a little late and we still have to end at the same time like that's fantastic yeah that's great if, if you, you want to start even later that's fine. yeah if you want to push it i can't stay any longer but if you want to push it <laughs> right i have a hard out to get back to my hotel and drink a gas station bud light <laughs> Yeah, and go visit the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That was the other thing I did. Oh, yeah, I didn't recognize any of the, the, the heads that you were posing next to. I know. I should have taken some for you. The Brett Favre was there, you know, uh, Bart Starr, Don't know who that Reggie is. White, these Packers legends. You know Reggie White, right? Reggie White? No. Oh, God. I mean, it sounds familiar, but I don't know. Why was he a Packer? Yes, he was a Packer. Was Bart Starr a Packer, I assume? Yeah. by your tone what about vince lombardi do you know who that sure, is sure 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 oh, you know him okay yep he's there but uh yeah i saw the pro football hall of fame because it was right there in canton and let me tell you something it was pretty cool because they have all the butt so they literally do bronze that's what they're famous for they do bronze busts yeah. of their heads and all the heads are in there and that part is great the rest of it pretty whack and also Thirty nine dollars to get in. Get in. Oh, steep, pretty steep, and ten bucks to park in the town of Canton, Ohio, where literally you could park anywhere. Like there is not another charged parking spot in the entire city, and and there's system. There's no like fence. There's no like gate. Yeah. So I had read that it was ten bucks to park. I was like, that's outrageous, but whatever. And so I park, and then I realized they didn't give me a ticket there was no attendant there's no enforcement i'm not gonna pay to park this is great and then i walk up to the counter and they're like uh okay it's 39.99 i was like all right like oh and did you park and then i to absolutely just lie in that situation and go no i got dropped off by my uncle fred but no i just said yes and they're like okay it's another ten dollars no. Like, that's how bad I did. That's how lame I was. That's all right. I probably would have done the same thing. I would have been afraid they would have been like, really? Can you look at the screen, please? Is that not you yeah. getting out of your car? <laughs> had the most sophisticated entrapment policy. They're like, we're going to get these fuckers. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was like, if I thought I'd already beat this. Like, I thought I was already done. I was like, oh, it's just bullshit. They don't charge for parking. We just... 
but I wasn't, if I had gone in prepared, I definitely would have lied. Yeah. I just wasn't prepared to lie. And they caught me in an honest moment. So there you go. Another $10 uh, out the I got you. Yeah. So I got to do the rest of these shows. Heidi's going to meet me in uh, Atlanta. We're going to go to Savannah and then do Charleston, South Carolina, and then go home. So that's what's left for me. So when do you go home? Sunday this week. Oh, okay. Be reunited with my family. Nice. I feel like a... Uh, have you not been home since the show? No, because I had COVID and then I had the quarantine and then you I went had, straight to West Virginia. Yeah. And then I had to do this gig. Um, and I told him, hey, guys, I'm still positive. But uh, no, no, I was with, <laughs> I was out of my 10 day yeah. protocol or whatever. Well, that'll be that. So it was Father's Day. That's your reunion. Yeah. Yeah. But I do feel like my my wife and child, like they left. I feel like a guy, I feel like this would be the experience of your family leaving you, you know, like you're staying in a bunch of like, oh yeah, in hotels. Even, even though you, uh, you essentially left them. Well, yeah, I guess. Huh? I guess so, except for the, but I want to go home. That's right. the you're just not welcome back. I'm not enjoying this. I would like to go home, but they're like, no, you, we don't want you around right now. Yeah. So you're not good for us right now. No. If anybody's been uh, left by their wife and daughter, comment below. Tell us what it was a five star review. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. This is perfect timing. So we have, I gotta I gotta share it. We'll see if you can figure out who this was. Or maybe it was just some maybe it was just all right. So this is Barry Pollard. And maybe you've seen this. No. Not just the subject is not just another podcast with two guys. Dot dot dot. Okay, that's a lie, especially when they aren't shooting themselves in the leg and or foot by plaguing us with nettlesome guests. <laughs> <laughs> Another anti-guester. But this one is... Yeah, real the original, Barry. <laughs> yeah, Barry. But this one is worth listening to. Trust me. Great chemistry between Johnny and Andrew. They get into this zone where you feel as if you've known one of these guys for almost a decade and are married to his sister. So I don't know. I don't know a Barry Pollard, but uh, yeah, thank you, Barry, for the yeah, thank you, Barry, for the review. So you know what? I'll tell you. What, I I have a sneaky suspicion. I know what spawned this. So mm -hmm. my brother-in-law. Phil, we'll just call him Phil. We'll call him Phil P. Wait, yeah. or no, we'll call him we'll call him P Pinch. P Pinch. <laughs> and uh he so he's a like this guy. Wait, so his his initials are PP? Correct. PP. Just want to be sure. Yeah, PP. Um so he I don't think he's ever ran a official race. He just like runs and he, he ran a nine mile run sent me the screenshot through the nike app average pace for a nine mile run take just guess 10 minute 10 minute mile no i've i've actually done that for nine miles That's at some crazy. point i couldn't today but yeah i yeah probably a few months ago. Anyway, seven minutes and two seconds. Jeez. The fastest mile I've ever run in my entire life is seven minutes and 12 seconds. PP was cooking. PP was burning some PP. Pee -pee. Now, is this now what does this have to do with Barry? Oh, so he so he sent that screenshot and we were all like, oh, my God, you're an idiot. Why are you not running official race? Like you're you know, do yeah. you not understand how you should go to that way. is. And, uh, and he said, and so he said, oh, you should, you should mention this on the podcast. And I said, you know what? We actually have a strict policy. We don't mention people, but there is a way to get on the podcast. And it has something to do with five and the shape of a star. And then boom, here we go. Five star review, Barry Pollard. But now why did he have to use a pseudonym? Is he embarrassed? Uh, that makes me angry. 
I that, know. And that he's embarrassed. This uh, Olympic track star is embarrassed. To he didn't want the, Well, he didn't want the. He said, "I tried to hide behind a pseudonym because I didn't want the algorithm to find me." <laughs> well, that he is. Doesn't want to be associated with the cavalry. I'll give him a break on that because if the algorithm finds out you're a cavalry fan, you're gonna get flooded with like testicle deodorant, Wendy's, Taco Bell, Prius ads that nobody wants oh you're getting you're getting ahead of me on my topics for today by the way of course <laughs> it's a tuesday you're going to talk about testicle deodorants or Taco bell i mean it's like literally every other episode it's not, so it's, yeah. it's not taco bell and it's not deodorant we'll just say that oh wow oh it's a prius but i uh no, no. testicles it's, testicles testicles just testicles. But we'll get we'll get to that later we're still in pre-show We'll get to that. Yeah, this is pre-show banner. Well, you know, this country is very divided and it disagrees. We're really switching gears. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll bring it all home. <laughs> okay. Country is very divided and we are, uh, who knows the political affiliations of all of our many, many, many listeners across many, many, many different states. Correct. But one thing everyone can agree on is that they hate guests. <laughs> I mean, literally every, con- I think I shared, did I share the one on the show of my mom? Just like yes. she's yes. sending me a Facebook, not even like a message, but a response to a story. And she just, she just said, just out of the blue on my phone on, on some app. I didn't even know I had popped up. I was like, I said, no guests. <laughs> I was like, what is, what is this? It took me a long time to figure out what Why she is my mom messaging me through Venmo. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I was like, you owe me $18, mom. <laughs> oh, uh, I, you know what's funny is I don't think we've ever brought that up with a guest on the air. Well, we do, but it always seems like a joke. <laughs> and like our last guest, Amy Miller, who was great. Yep. And uh, very, and she's a very funny comic, but was the one that spurred my mom's take was that. <laughs> no guests. <laughs> Knock it off. But I think I even named the the uh, episode like it was called "No Garbage Guests" because like we were joking around about how. Yeah. But I don't think the guests would ever assume that they're actually because most pot. If you think about podcasts, almost all of them are predicated on like a guest, right? Joe Rogan or um, oh. I'm sure Mark Maron. Yeah, <laughs> Mark Maron. But imagine a whole hour of Mark Maron with no guests. So I, I I don't understand it, and we bring on good guests. Oh, I understand it. I oh. understand it. When you're when you got when you got two when you got two guys shooting hundred. Two guys who love Zelda, who love fast food, who yeah. drive Priuses. That's who right. Have a good deal. Yep. I mean, who doesn't want to hear their opinions? Straight white. Thank you. Oh. With kids. In this yeah, parents, parents, parents. I mean, we're having a moment right now. I mean, who doesn't want to hear their opinions about the world? And not even opinions about the world. Opinions about very meaningless. About shit and farts shit and deodorant fart and, and fast and food. Balls. Mm. And your water, that liquid death. I think about you all the time because you presented that liquid death thing to me as like this sort of oh, my buddy started this in his, his garage. I see it at, like, Walmart. Just giant cases, main display. I mean, this is, like, mainstream. Oh, yeah. Big Across time. the country. I saw it somewhere else. I don't think it was Walmart, but I saw it it's, somewhere it's, else. It's got to be rich. Well, he didn't start it. He, like, got in. Like, he's, like, the marketing uh, president. Still, like, yeah, he's, he like. Any piece of it, he's got to be very. Yeah, he's, he's, doing doing, uh, good. he's doing good. So it's great. It's great. And I have yet to pay for a single can of it because I mean, it is water. flooded with cases and I love it. My kids love it too. Cause it like literally, and this is not, I mean, sure they're a sponsor, but it's the only like, what's it called? Sparkling water that like tastes, it tastes like soda kind of like the flavored ones. Okay. That's what I didn't understand. So it is sparkling water. Yeah. It's, it's water. Well, they no, they have, they have the regular ones are just mountain water from the Alps, I think. And then they have sparkling water is the other one. Yeah. 
Exactly. I did the jerk off motion when you said from the Alps. Because who? Just, I mean, that's what it says on the camera. So unvalidatable. Unvalidatable. Unprovable. Right. But uh, I actually would like the kind that's just regular, because I feel so guilty about the plastic water bottles. But then I'm also just have to come to terms with the fact that I'm never going to be the dude who carries around a bot like his own reusable water bottle. You yeah, know, that's, a, that's another thing that they're like all about is the the packages, like the cardboard box, the, the, the can. It's like smashing, you know, plastic bottles. Get rid of that stuff. Yeah, so I like this. I like the the boxed water was a cool. Mm -hmm. That made me feel better about myself. But this is even better because there's no, you know what I mean. I don't know why everybody doesn't do switch to the cans. Who doesn't love a big can? I know. You don't see switch to liquid death. <laughs> you don't see beer coming in uh, plastic milk you know? cartons. Yeah, you know what I mean. I do know yeah. what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, they come in glass. Maybe like soda, like Diet Coke can come in like a 20 ounce plastic bottle, but you'd never see, you know, like Coors Light in a plastic bottle. No one would stand for that. It's ridiculous. Like water do that, you know? Yeah, they're ahead of the, they're ahead they're already, of the they're ahead to it. They literally made the product that I'm asking for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here going, why doesn't somebody do this thing that just I only am thinking about because it exists? And Johnny showed it to me through the video screen <laughs> that I'm looking at. And I'm like, somebody get on this. Oh. I'm about it. it. I'm all about it. All right. All well, right. What else? Anything? Oh, I this. So I wanted to share this. I have, this is a pre-discussion, pre-show discussion point. <laughs> it's not pre-show, pre-topic. Free topic, yeah. Discussion. So I went to, uh, I did. I went to comedy on state. Bust out some new material. I thought this was very clever. This is just to show. I love Madison, and I love the audiences of Madison, and that's my favorite club. It's comedy on state. So one of the, the bit. The yeah. bit is. I make it. I'm talking about. All right, you know, shitty comedians always go on stage. And and they'll be like at the end they'll be like all right everyone well I got one more joke I don't know if you guys can handle it it's a pretty crazy <laughs> so I tell them about that I'm like you know you see comedians doing that well I want to know what would happen if the audience had no interest in hearing the joke so I'm gonna set it up and you guys just don't respond yeah. at all yeah. And then I had a plant in the audience that, you know, that says, that says, so that I, that the goal is for me to say, all right, hey, I got one, it's pretty crazy. And then no one responds. Yeah. yeah. And I said, I, you guys, this is, I mean, it's really edgy and blue. And then my plant says, you know, hey, man, if you want to do it, do it. If not, don't. You know, and then I'm like, wow, I, I, the reason I say it is because it's pretty crazy. I don't know if you guys can handle it. He's like, well, like I said, you know, if you want to do it, do it. You're the comedian. If you think you might upset someone, then maybe skip it. <laughs> and I just keep saying that it's too crazy. I don't think you guys can handle it. And then he's like, well, you know what? Then just don't do it. And then, you know, I'm like, all right, well, good night, everyone. So I do. So that's the bit. So that's the bit. So I do it. And I explain everything. And the first I say, all right, I got a bit. It's very crazy. It's very, I got to, you know, and it's silence. But it was too uncomfortable. It was too uncomfortable for them. They start chanting, do it, do it, tell the joke. And I'm like, are you sheep? Are you kidding me? There is no joke. This is the joke. Oh, my God. So it totally did not. Uh, did I think you got you learned a lesson there. And that is, uh, as much as people want to pretend like they like meta comedy, yeah, they really want, they just want the fucking pie in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because as bad as they want to pretend they love this like Kaufman-esque avant-garde, at the end of the day, they want to hear the two guys going to a bar and then like, you know, the priest is fucking the guy. Right, right. You know what I mean? They want that. 
and then and you got your market research right there. You literally told them there is no joke. Right. You just want this moment, and they couldn't handle. They couldn't it. handle it. They're like, give us the thing. Give us the stupid knock knock joke. <laughs> but you don't have. <laughs> but it was fun. It was a learning experience. I I, uh, I thought you were gonna say the the trope where the thing I hate is where comics go up there and. Uh, Hey, you guys have a choice. I gotta get out. Hey, I gotta get out of here. I don't, man. Wow, that went fast. I love when a comedian says that too. Whoa, out of time already, boy. That was out of a, time already. Wait a minute. You looked at your watch every three minutes during your set. Wow, that was the fastest thirty-eight minutes of a fifty-minute set I've ever seen in my life. But folks, I gotta get out of here. They're yelling at me in the back, going like this, and I need to. <laughs> You just this thing I need to go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, for those of you listening at home, I'm doing the stretching motion. Right, right, right. But uh, and then they'll say, "I only have time for one more." Do you want to hear a clean one or a dirty one? <laughs> it's so funny you say that because I was debating between doing that or yeah. doing what I did, and then I was going to tell them to say the clean one, and I was going to be like, "Oh, fuck." Uh, no that's what you should do i'll do that next week you should do you should do this where you go you guys want to hear a, a clean one or a dirty <laughs> one <laughs> and then just get the plant to just chime in too quickly like clean and just like stand up and wave their arm like overpower clean it needs to be clean and you're like oh but maybe a dirty one and then the part of the plant is just like insistent my grandma's here. Just do the clean one. Uh, uh but what about in your gla- what if your grandma plugged her ears? Yeah, maybe your grandma wants to hear the dirty. She really doesn't. She really does not want to hear the dirty one. We want to hear the clean one. Hmm? I'm gonna level with that. That's what I'll do. That's what I'll do next week. <laughs> so this guy was making love to a whole <laughs> To a woman of the night. <laughs> I did. I had another. What was the other one? Uh, yeah, maybe that was just too meta of a set because it's like at Comedy on State, you can. I mean, well, apparently you can't. It, that that was too much. But I go, I, I, I come out. I was like, all right, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah, keep it going for yourselves. A lot of ugly people here tonight. A lot of ugly people. And then I do the thing where I'm like, oh, and if you're looking around and you're thinking, Hey, I don't see any ugly people. And then I go, I go, if you're looking around saying, hey, I don't see any ugly people. Well, there's a couple in the back over there. And then there's a bunch over here. And I just pointed out a bunch of people. Uh, that's that's uh, the comic who shall not be named who I was on the ship with. Right. Unless that, you're a Patreon member. Yeah, did that exact thing, like, about dumb people. Oh, shit. You're looking around, and you're with your friends, and the, look to your left, and look to your right, and if they're not dumb, then guess what? You're the dumb one. Look <laughs> to your left. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's how it works. There's so many comedy tropes that have been around forever and that like we've been doing comedy for a long time so we've seen just about mm-hmm. a version of it and the saddest part is is that they still work like well, and another sad thing is like a thousand percent yeah that's why they don't go away because they were but they were like even that one it like when it was not so over like when that was probably new it was probably very funny but when was it new? I don't know. The ancient Roman. A thousand years ago? It was like giving a speech. <laughs> like, my fellow Romans, look to your east. Look to your west. If you're not the Brutus, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's the part where we get an ego, I think, and then you think you're going to like, especially when you're at Madison, which is literally, literally the best comedy club probably in the country. I don't know who could really compete. I don't even know how, how many people would argue with it. Yeah. 
but even the in smart college educate college town you know yeah. liberal everything you'd want for a crowd that you'd think would get it but i guarantee you you take the hackiest fucking magician whatever juggler you put him in he's gonna crush because mm-hmm. you know? people like it yeah why we argue with it we try to twist it we try to go but what if we came at it like this or whatever we do all this interesting stuff they want yeah, it's not broken. Why are you trying to fix it? It works. They want the T-bone steak, man. Quit trying to like reinvent it, you know? Yeah. But uh, I appreciate you trying. <laughs> yeah. I will try that other one next week. Try try the clean or dirty. Yeah. The other thing would be is if you tried to sell it and you wanted to tell the clean joke. So you're like, hey, do you guys want a clean joke? I got I only have time. Oh, man. I only have... God, they're giving me, they're giving me the sign. I only got time for one more. This went so fast. It's like an open mic too. Everybody gets like five minutes. <laughs> Guys, this went so quick tonight. I know you only have 13 more comics, but, uh, but then you go, I only have time for one more. Do you want a clean one or a dirty one? And then everybody's, of course, going to say dirty. And you go, but what about that clean one? Yeah. Is dirty is so easy. What I mean, clean. So, yeah. And it's kind of vulgar and, I don't really like people who like dirty comedy, you know? So if you guys like that, it's kind of bullshit, if you ask me. I mean, so you know, this just like the easiest way to do comedy. So do you guys want the clean one or the dirty one? And then they're like, <laughs> I guess. That's, well, that's why I think it would be funny to have a plan. Just be like, well, then why did you offer it? <laughs> oh. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I love your new thing with, where you need a plan. A logical plant in the audience. I'm gonna be your plant. That that should be our new act. Is I can just be the plant, and I <laughs> with you. That would be a lot of fun. We'll we'll call it the the Slater and Beaner show, but it's literally just one comic performing that gets yelled at by the plant, and the plant is the other half. Dude, that's a new new version of the Devil's Act. I love it. Audience plant. I think Kaufman had his manager do shit like that or something. Zamuda. Muda, that's right. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Oh, but that reminded me. Okay, one more story. So you know the the stretch for, pre- for our listeners. One more pre-topic discussion point. And you, you know, like in the back of the, did you ever do the comedy cafe in Milwaukee when it was like JD? No, I I, I I've probably sent a veil there. But... So he used to like you know, they would do the thing where you stretch like in the he'd stand in the doorway at the back of the room and if he like wants you to go he'd do the stretch signal yeah or he'd or or he'd do this and they're the ones where it's like you know if you go 13 seconds over they would tell you like they're mad at you hey they'd show you a stopwatch 8 13 you're supposed to do eight minutes what know? why would what would be the instance they want you to stretch just because they didn't get the checks out yeah yeah the check the waitresses or the next comic whatever so i was and that was like my home club and so i was i i, I had this thing right i would do i would do a guest set dressed up as either Batman or Spider-Man. Like I had different sets where it was all these like very specific. So I'm doing a set as, I don't even remember which one it was. I think it was Batman. So I have, you know, I have like four minutes of Batman material. And and I'm like, right, I'm doing four minutes. So I'm in, I do my four, I'm coming up to the closer. Well, I, Cause I have like a really, like a good Batman costume. So it's like in detail, it's like Batman doing stand-up comedy. And he had, he had merch and everything. I had like bumper stickers. Give me a little bit. I wish I could remember. Like one of the bumper stickers was like, uh, like quick Robin, put your mouth on my bat pole or something. You know, just something stupid. And it was like all like ripping on other comedian. I don't know. So anyways, I should, I should try to find a copy of it. So I'm like, I'm winding down, I'm getting ready to dismount. And I look in the back and JD is going, Batman. as batman like like you got to stretch because you got to go you know the other guy's not rare whatever and i'm just like are you fucking I, ba- I don't have so then i just did my taco man joke as batman that i did at your show <laughs> it was the dumbest i was like i went into panic mode i was like well i you know, I can't get off the stage. They're going to shoot me. 
What a missed up. I, I thought you were going to tell me you just started riffing as Batman. So like, God, what is up with this uh, Commissioner Gordon, huh? Anybody else? All that was used up in my act. Though. That's like all everything I could have riffed was like written into my act. Oh, God. You guys ever notice how all the supervillains have like dumbass fucking wounds? <laughs> Don't you think they would just be like an evil person who just was evil as their name and I'd have to go fight them? But no. Yeah, they're all very easy to find. Observational Batman. <laughs> that is so funny. And then when you left, so you did your Taco Man bit. Did it was it like received? Were they able to like enjoy it? Honestly, I don't even remember. I mean, this was, I mean, the club hasn't been there in years, but I don't even remember. They like your name. You're like, okay, that's it for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm Batman. Um, I would do, I think, I think I start like when I would introduce myself, I'm like, yeah, I'm Bruce, Witt, or I mean, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I yeah. mean, Batman. Okay. Oh, so that's, that's a good point. You did it as Batman, not as Bruce Wayne. So you didn't want them, you're in. Right. But I actually, I was like a stupid Batman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is very funny. (laughs) Now you you made me want to find... I got to find that tape. Maybe that'll be Patreon content. We'll have to jack up the price for that. I feel... (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I also... there's That was the greatest sentence of like... Yeah, I used to go on as Batman and do guest spots as Batman because I had a really good Batman costume. (laughs) Oh, that's a good one. I should write a whole act around Batman because I got this killer costume. <laughs> Were you ever worried that, like, what if you murdered as Batman? Like, just like, not that Batman's stuck. He doesn't kill. Right. But what if you really did, like, do very, very well as Batman on stage? And then you're like, shit, now I'm like, that's it. It's better than my material. Yeah, like you're going to have to be the Batman comic. And then you'll be, like, world famous. But, you know. As, as Batman, like yeah. Worst things could have happened. <laughs> and then your alter ego is Johnny Beaner, you know. It's like the alter, alter ego. Alter, alter ego, yeah. It's actually kind of... Deep. Whatever, meta. Meta. Right no. Not well, me. Me huh? this, baby. What? Not me, I said. No meta comedy. Okay, well, we should get into it. Let's do it. All right, you want to go first? I can go first. I can I'm blabbing. Um, okay, so here's what I need backup on. Um, there's a Target by my house in Portland. And uh, as I think we've mentioned on the show, I, I, I've defended like being a little bit five finger discounty at the self checkout aisle. Yeah, I was, I was going to bring that up when you mentioned uh, admitting you paid for parking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, even I have no respect for it, and, but I've since stopped. In fact, me and Heidi have like a real like we're like, hey, we we're parents, we can't be, you know, we got to living say, in a house of dishonesty. Yeah, of ill repute. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, but it was more than that. It was like Target, especially the one by my house, gets robbed so much. I honestly started feeling bad about it. And it's so easy. Anyone can steal from Target because they don't. So this is what I've learned is that they don't enforce any sort of shoplifting policy because it's more expensive to suffer any lawsuit that comes from like pursuing a shoplifter Mm -hmm. than it is to just eat the loss on whatever merchandise is stolen. So they basically created this system where the only thing stopping anyone from just walking into Target, picking up an armful of goods and walking out is the shame of it, of just being like, are you that person? Right. That's the only thing stopping anyone listening. Oh, it doesn't even beep? Like, so, like what about the it stuff that has beep. that sensor? There's no batteries in the beepers. There's nothing in those machines. And most of it's self-checkout now anyway. So there's mm-hmm. literally nothing to stop you. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. There is nothing to stop you from just robbing Target Blind, except for the social contract. Mm-hmm. And a conscience, guilty conscience. Conscience, shame, whatever. 
but the, what that's created now at the Target by my house is just sort of like lawless, you know, because like I feel like Walmart has like an image of the sort of like dude with no teeth and the RVs and the, you know, white sure. trash, whatever. But Target was like the sort of upscale, not upscale, but you know, like a little bit step up from Walmart. Right, sure. You know, people, that was a treat to go there and, and women especially, like, I'm going to buy some leggings and some chapstick or whatever. Yeah. But this Target by my house is a freaking ghost town. It is like a magnet for all the, it's like a Wild West town and, the, and it's like the brothel or something. It's just brought out all the low life scum drug wow. addicts who just robbed the place. So my, what I need backup is, is they need to just, they've totally misjudged the policy. They need to like go back on that. whatever they decided at a corporate meeting, whenever that was like, hey, actually, let's just not defend ourselves. Yeah. They should go the other way and just completely like shut it down, hire like 500 security guards who are all trained in like MMA or whatever. And just like, <laughs> beat the shit out of people. Yeah, beat the shit out of any, like casino, I was thinking about like a casino, they, they wouldn't like just let you rob them. Right. They'd take you in the back room and put your arm in the vice or whatever, you know. So they need to go casino style or something. They need to, they need to eat the lawsuits because their, their whole reputation is taken. Yeah. Away. I used to think of Target as like this cool place. And now I think of it as like the dollar store or whatever, like, you know, so, I think that it sounds like it, it. It sounds like it happened because, like they were they were banking on nobody will know. We can't afford. They would they have to think that there will be consequences. But once it's common knowledge that there's no consequences, the secret's out. So yeah. you gotta, you got to change tactics. You got to switch. Yeah. It. You got yeah. You got to uh, because people have no respect for you. You got to pivot. You gotta people are out. just. They, they don't respect you. They don't think you're real. They don't think you're going to stand up for yourself. And you're right that they were banking on the like sort of trick because there is a guy who stands there and he's got security written on his shirt, but his job is just to watch people leave with the Keurig machine. <laughs> and there's the- for them to help them out to their car. <laughs> like, I hope he comes back. He's a nice guy. But then there's, and there's those metal- those like beeper machines, there are those that, that are fake, but they're fake. And don't ask me how I know they're fake, but that's what I love when they beep. And then the person that beeps is like, whoa, whoa. And, the, and the nearest employee is like, you're fine. You're fine. They only beep for people who actually bought the thing. And then they just get waved through either way. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I need back up on is a complete. Uh, well, is this a temporary thing? Are you saying like, no. Just they should. Oh well, yeah. Oh, like, why wouldn't they have done that in the first place? They obviously can't afford it, right? But I, that's what I'm saying. You. This would be my I, as someone who's very in tune with society, and I, you know, I read people for a living. <laughs> what a generous way to describe my stupid job. But uh, what I would tell them is, you're at risk of losing your entire brand as the like fun rewardy type store you're going to become the like you know dmv or something the place nobody wants to go because you're yeah. attracting the element and the element is thieves and so it's worth whatever you think you're saving by not stopping shoplifting you're actually you're going to lose in the long run with the you're going to lose your oh, yeah brain. Once the word is out, it's it's definitely more profitable for them to hire security. Yeah, eat the lawsuits. Just go, yeah, there's going to be a couple lawsuits, but then the stories will scare off, you know what I mean? Yeah. Now I sound like it's a... Kind of like Batman. It's, yeah, it is like Batman. It's like Batman. You put the... Put, get Batman. Hire a literal Batman. Literally. Get someone in the bat suit, and they go, oh, that's a funny joke. Oh, look, Batman's standing there. What's he going to do? And then he... Fucking, yeah, he's an MMA fighter that beats the shit out of him. Shit. If you honest to God got your ass kicked by someone in a Batman suit, that would go viral. And then there'd be a lawsuit, but then you'd pay it. 
And then the next person would see Batman or whatever and go, well, I don't want to be the dude on World Star getting my ass right. by Batman. Right. Great idea, John. It's just, yeah, the idea. The idea of Batman. Is and they could partner. Oh, even better. There's always like a new Batman movie coming out. So you partner. It's like a sponsorship thing. You know, okay, oh. video's going to go viral. You're going to get a lot of attention for your movie. And we'll like change the script on people robbing. I love it. Yeah, pretty good. This podcast, I mean, this podcast, I, don't, I can't think of a better podcast. You're just giving it away. I know. So You're just giving it away. This is free. This isn't even on the Patreon. And no guest. No I know. Shitty moron guest in here gumming up the works. All right. Ugh. Yeah, factory. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Johnny, what do you need backup on? All right. So do you shave your balls? <laughs> so here's my topic. So you see yes. <laughs> no, it is. That it, it is so good there's no guests. Because I feel like you don't come in with that confidence. Right. With a guest on. Right, right. So you see the ads for the the lawnmower. Is that what it's called? Like the that's yeah. like the new thing, huh? You're asking like you don't know. I guess this is no. The- I know that's what it's called. I'm asking if you know. I'm uh, finding out that my my yeah. feed gets a lot of ads that other people aren't getting. Wow. So that's like that's like manscaping is having a moment. We'll say. And there's all these cheesy dumb commercials of like, oh, ninety eight. Some girl in a shower behind a curtains like ninety percent of couples the woman likes a man who trims down there or whatever she says you know and then they show this the product the new one the the lawnmower that's what it's called right is that the company i don't know what the company's name is yeah anyway they show them shaving a kiwi like with the 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 thing right and it's like look at there's no nicks or anything they're shaving like the hairs off of a kiwi let me tell you, my balls are, if my balls were as firm as a kiwi, that's right. that would be great. Would here's, be what, here's what they need to do. This is, this is what I need back up on. They need to put the kiwi in a real long sock. Yeah. And then shave the sock all along like i was thinking it bunches like, up a zip a ziploc bag half filled with water mm-hmm. and like, no air in it and then like two walnuts right. by shaving that without causing any leaks right yeah anyone can shave an orange it's yeah. it's it's very there's a lot of surface I area a straight razor to an orange yeah i mean just like a guy in the wild west you know, steaming up some lather, and I could, t- you know, that would be with a knife. I could shave right. with a kiwi. I could shave a. I could shave a kiwi with a knife. Sure. Percent. I've got a question for you. So I have a Norelco one. Oh wait, what do you need backup on? Sorry, did I interrupt you? No, well, no, just that that's a bad example. That, that, I think they're marketing it to. Yeah, that that's inaccurate. They need to stop. I think that's marketing to women that aren't paying attention to balls. They're like, oh. Look at that. I could get that for my man. Yeah, because there's a lot of talk about guys who don't like know about the clitoris or whatever. Yeah. But less talk about women who don't pay attention to balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how long and dangly. How difficult they are to shave. Uh, yeah, the tide is turning, ladies. <laughs> the tide is turning. Uh, oh, what was I going to... Oh, before I get to the other thing I was going to say, it is what bothers me about the commercials. And I've seen the one that you're talking about where it's the girl and she peeks behind. Why is she in the shower? It doesn't even right. mean, She peeks behind a shower curtain. She's like, hey guys, 98% of ladies, like their fella who shaves down there. Like you still have to use the euphemisms in this. Right. You know, like this is like, just come out. I just want to see the girl like, 
We like it when you shave your nuts. <laughs> Just say it. I mean, if we're here. Right. I like bald testicles. <laughs> co- product code. Why are we still using this wink wink? You know. Yeah, use promo code smooth <laughs> nutsack. You created this stupid product. Like you then you just own it. Right. That's good. See, that's, see commercial even, where, that's a better thing to need backup on. I see the commercial where it's the woman who's like talking about her, her boyfriend's t-shirts and how like he's got a big gut right. <laughs> and he's got arms. <laughs> like, wear this shirt. It hides your gut and your arms look good. And then I'm sitting there watching it. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Why they targeted me pretty fucking dead on in this one. <laughs> yeah, I got a gut that I'd like to hide. Uh, oh, but here's my question for you. Yes. So I use a, not to get gross or anything. Sure. But I have a Norelco One Touch razor that I use uh, for my face. Mm-hmm. It's got a bunch of different guides on the razor and so i like what you see here is about what i always keep like a little bit because heidi likes just a little bit of uh stubble you know sure when i shave it's basically just to this yeah but what are your thoughts on using the same device on your ball there (laughs) down below (laughs) huh like that close no no I, I I don't know. I mean, I, personally, I can't answer for everyone, but no, I, I'm not buying another one just for my wiener. That's what I'm saying. So now we got to buy like multiple machines. Like yeah. use a different guide would be my, I don't even use a different, I'll use the same guide. Well, yeah. Okay. I like, keep, I like to keep my nuts about this length. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you like a good, nice, well-trimmed beard on your balls. Yeah. It's sophisticated. You actually shave a goatee into your nuts. Yeah. <laughs> like you shave the sides, but you have a nice long, like Jim the Anvil Neidhart. I do the uh, Fu Manchu on my nuts. Yes, that's what I was. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and it's also like, is this weird? Like, you know, they have that, do you have the attachment to uh, do your nostrils? You can take off the blade and then stick up the thing. Well, you yeah. can just shove that up your ass. <laughs> I don't even have hair on my ass. It's just a nice, nice reward. Yeah, it's a reward after I shave my balls. No, I I have actually someone, I don't know if it was Heidi or somehow I have a machine that's actually separate that is for like ear and nose trimming, but I never use it. What I do is I just take the razor blade that again, it, this one touch thing, you can't really cut yourself with it. And I just kind of stick it up there every once in a while. <laughs> Uh, when you get some long wiry guys I, and i also like pull i have a weird thing where it's like just pulling them gives me oh. like traction. it hurts but then you're like yeah that was a good yeah, i'm alive <laughs> <laughs> yes the kicks. yeah <clears throat> well God. i feel backed up yeah i'm backing you up those are dumb I forgot uh, how it started, but well, yeah, they, I don't know. I just that's not they're they're acting like the problem isn't what the problem is. You know, like I'm trying to describe. I'm trying to the, what's the analogy for like the tricky part of your ball sack to? to, to oh <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I did. It's like rigid. It's like you know. It's like oh, shaving the bottom of the balls is fine, but it's the part where they're like the middle or higher up than the balls, like where yeah. it's just all in and out, in and out valleys. And yeah, not to get too gross, but like, like two of where you can get really dangerous is like next to where your dick right. starts. Yeah, right, right. The where the, the, the base of the dong is a highly dangerous area. Like, I feel like I want to put up a little fence or a little yeah. post that says caution. Right. No, but that's where you can nick. 
But I don't. I mean, the kiwi is a horrible. I don't know who. I mean, I guess they just picked the kiwi because it's like one of the few things that has like fuzz on it. But then also, if anyone had kiwi level fuzz as pubic hair, they wouldn't be shaving it anyway. Right. Like, That's like perfect. That's that like shaves them alive and not like a toddler. And also, it's well kept and not you know, curly and gross. It's like a, yeah, it's not. It's like a buzz cut for your nuts. Yeah, kiwi level. I'd sign up for that. If you could get like a laser procedure to just give you kiwi level pubic hair for the rest of your life, I'm signing up for that. Oh right. yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, get on it, liquid death. Yeah, <laughs> and to pivot. Got all the answers. <laughs> mm. Yep. Mm. Okay, buddy. Good app. Good app. Oh, solid app. Solid app. No guests. I think we're just no guests. I, I'll be curious to see what happens, but yeah, spe- it's got to be a special occasion. Yeah. Um, thank you everybody for listening to this. Uh, I will shout out to Barry Pollard. Shout out Barry Pollard. Thanks for chiming in. I hope your algorithm isn't ruined. Yeah. Oof. The rest of your days. I will be, and I'm trying to remember, I will be in uh, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, the Laughing Gas Comedy Club. This, when you hear this, this week. Yeah, you told me about that one. If anybody is in Cape Girardeau, come see. Pretty hardcore fan base in Cape Girardeau, don't you? I think so. I kind of think this will be my spot. Uh, I will be. Doing a triathlon in Verona. Whoa, triathlon? We didn't even talk triathlon. about triathlon. I was gonna do it with my brother, and then he bailed, and his wife was gonna watch the kiddos. But oh, that's right. Then they're doing he something else. But now my my mother in law is gonna come and watch the kids, so I'm doing this by myself. Ugh. Actually, maybe my cousin Brandon will come Are up you- and do it. Are you confident about the swim, the swimming? It's gonna suck, but I'm doing I'm doing the shorter I'm doing the sprint instead of the Olympic because that's just I'll I'll drown otherwise. So I yeah I did it last year. You know where your water wings? No, oh, yeah, yeah, water okay. wings. Yeah, and my flippers. Uh oh man, if you could get uh fins, they're for- not allowed. They specify on the website. You know? <laughs> I have to say that. Yeah. No flippers. Yeah, that would be awesome though. Just zoom in across. Those things are like you're like I, a fish. You you go so fast. They're like incredible. Yeah. They're really a huge advantage to swimming. Bring back fins. Bring back fins. All right. <clears throat> okay. Remember, sign up for the Patreon for tier post show banner. Should be a doozy. It I should be. Is there anything? Is there anything we're gonna reveal on post show banner today? I don't know. Uh, you'll have to. I don't know. You'll have to be a Patreon to find out. Ultimate tease. Johnny's gonna shave his balls live on, live on the Patreon. You want to see that? Uh, sign up. Uh, and that's it. Leave a five star review. And thank you, everybody, for listening to. Okay, we'll read.